Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. Boy, this subject just keeps coming up constantly about the refilling of the CLI 42 cartridges for the Pro 100. Wow, what a popular printer this has been. And let me tell you, if you're considering getting one of these, consider the fact that an ink set, in other words, OEM cartridge set, is $115. So keep that in mind. Printing is not cheap. And then you're gonna, of course, consider refilling and you may not do this properly and you're gonna introduce all sorts of ink flow problems to your printer, which in the case of a Canon Pro 100 or any other Canon thermal print head printer will be the death of it. Okay, so really consider and think hard about the weighing the disadvantages of the cost of printing compared to the cheapness, if you will, of refilling your own cartridges. And they allow you to do that, surprisingly enough. It's so easy to do, but you have to do it correctly. Now, someone complained about the fact that when they showed a declared empty cartridge, it looked like it had tons of ink in it. Uh, no, it does not have tons of ink in it. In fact, it has to. Whatever ink is in there in that sponge, it must never be allowed to go dry or you will kill your printhead. The ink is a printhead coolant agent. The printhead prints by generating heat. Every single nozzle explosion that takes place generates heat. The ink cools that printhead to keep it from going to that dangerous level of temperature and that maintains it at the proper operating temperature. No ink flow, dead print hit, okay? So ink is needed and ink needs to remain in the sponge. Otherwise, if you can run it until it is perfectly dry like this is, okay, we'll get into the actual weights in a minute so that you know exactly what to do. So listen carefully. I'm not being a, a jerk here. I'm telling you like it is, Take it or leave it, but you can take this to the bank, I guarantee you. So, if the cartridge ever, for some reason, is allowed to go dry and you continue printing, how could you achieve this? Because the chip will be declared empty long before the sponge is empty. And that is a safety precaution that they have programmed into the printer to keep you from burning up your printhead. Simple. You're going to have to sacrifice a couple of milliliters of ink left in the sponge. But if you are refilling, and I'm going to tell you this so that you guys know, this is not really passed around too much. If you're going to refill, then you don't have to worry about that because that ink is not really being wasted. Okay. And I, I will explain how. If you choose to refill, you must do it a certain way. You must do it when the cartridge reaches low. Okay, low, never empty. What does low mean? Whether you can see this or not, if I can backlit this, you would see a prism right here. It protrudes above the floor of that empty liquid reservoir. This is an empty and dried cartridge, reflushed, in other words, ready to be filled. Now, when ink levels drop, because as you print and you draw out ink out of that double density sponge. It's a very technical, uh, technically designed sponge, by the way. It's not just cotton in there. This has been really in, well engineered. Let me just put it that way. Generic cartridges do not have that. So stay away from those. Learn how to do this with your original CLI 42 cartridges. Okay, Jose has said that a million times. When the ink is dropping, it is because it is replenishing the ink that you are using from the sponge. That replenishing process happens simultaneously, okay? The sponge saturation is maintained at the proper level as you are printing, simultaneously. Now, when the levels drop and that prism is exposed to air, that will trigger the low warning. Stop printing. Do not squeeze out another print out of that printer. Reset and refill that cartridge at that point. If you have other cartridges available on the side, 
quickly replace that cartridge or replace the whole set if you can get a second set of cartridges. There's many different options that you can actually put into practice. So there's no one perfect procedure. My perfect procedure and the most logical way for me to proceed is to just one cartridge reaches low, I remove the entire set. The other seven cartridges will be at different levels above that prism. None of them will have reached low yet. I take that whole set when one cartridge reaches low. What does that do for me? The sponges are at their optimal saturation level because they were never printed on with a dry liquid reservoir that could not further replenish that sponge. If you continue to print beyond that low level, now you're actually creating a deficit on this side. Whereas before you maintain 100% saturation level. That's the important thing, okay? So remove the whole set or remove one, whatever you are able to do. Again, the best option is the whole set. The secondary option is if you have cartridges like extras like that and you don't want to replace the whole set for whatever reason, just replace that one. Okay, and then reset and refill this one. This one will have a fully saturated sponge. All you got to do is fill this up to about 80% from the top. Let it sit for a few minutes. It will kind of balance itself out. It'll reach a certain level of equilibrium, if you will. Put the cap on it, of course, before you do any of that, obviously. Plug it and you can put it away until you need it the next time. Now, what happens if you want to refill these? Well, let me show you what you need to achieve. And let me show you how you can tell if you're a complainer and you're complaining about how much ink could possibly be in this sponge. Oh my God, they're wasting ink. I'm paying for this ink. No, you're not. This ink is actually given to you for free. That 1 ml or 2 ml that are there is not computed into your cost. You can only put about 8 ml physically in this side. The cartridge takes 13. A fully saturated sponge is about 5 ml worth of ink. If you let it go beyond empty, you're gonna draw out about four ml out of that sponge. And then the chip says, hey, I am now empty. Stop printing, please. Okay. That means there's about one and a half ml left, maybe. And one way you can test that is by weighing. But how do, how do I know what an empty cartridge weighs? Well, you would have to have one that has been reflushed and properly dried. And this weighs exactly 13.5 five grams so bone dry empty 13.5 grams this one is also 13.5 grams the ones that i have just dried and i mean flushed and dried at some of these points they're not quite at 13.5 some of them are around 14 some of them are as high as 14.8 that means i got a I got to remove more water out of that sponge. Okay, I still have moisture in there. I got to bring it down to that magic level of 13.5. And it depends on your ambient humidity. So don't worry too much about that. But once they reach that level, they're ready to be used. Now, what does this one weigh? This one weighs right now 14.5 grams. Look at all that ink in there, right? No, that actually equates to one ml of ink. And if we had less than that, that print hit that this cartridge came from would probably be damaged. Simple as that. So stop complaining about, oh, my sponge looks like it still has ink in it. It's just stained basically by ink. And within that whole sponge area is this thick, it is this wide, and this high. 1 ml is nothing, believe me. So don't worry about that in fact be thankful about that otherwise your printhead would have to be changed about every few months okay believe that all right so that is it these cartridges here came from a viewer who gave them to me if i was to remove this clip and remove the ball because the ball will add a tiny little amount of weight they would weigh about 14.5 grams okay they are empty notice the difference 
you notice the similarity between that black one I just showed you? You can see the levels. You can see the different layers of that sponge. Upper layer, lower layer. The lower layer allows more ink to be stored. The upper layer looks lighter because there's air in it now. If you allow that to happen in your refilling process, say you wanna print until the cartridges are empty because you wanna extract every bit of ink out of that cartridge so you don't waste it. Well, you're not really wasting it because you're gonna just add, you're just gonna add your own ink to it. And it's just gonna mix with whatever was left in the sponge anyway. You're not wasting any ink. Think about that. You're really not wasting any ink. That ink is still in the sponge. When the cartridge reaches low, the sponge is saturated. You just add maybe seven or eight milliliters of ink to that liquid chamber. That's all it is costing you to refill, about seven to eight milliliters of ink. Not a whole 13 because you still have five in the sponge if you did not continue printing, that is. So don't do that. The minute, the second you get that low warning, or even before you get that low warning, take out that whole set and replace it with a full reset and filled cartridge set, and you're good to go. You will run one single, the same, you will run the same, ah, I have to say this over and over, you will run the same volume purge cycle whether you change one cartridge, two, or eight of them at once, okay? You wanna do that. That will minimize the number of times you're actually exchanging cartridges. If you do the one at a time, there always will be different level cartridges and you run a purge cycle after one single cartridge change and that might trigger another low warning from another cartridge. Now you gotta change that one. And that will trigger another purge cycle, which may trigger in the next couple of days, another low warning. And you're constantly changing cartridges. You don't wanna do that. One full set at a time. What if you don't have a full set? I'm sorry, you have to buy one. You just have to buy one. If you wanna do this and approach it the correct way. Yeah, I told you at the beginning, you may not like this. Printing is expensive. There's no cheap way out of this, but we have come up with methods that allow you to print without the cost involved of constantly buying OEM cartridges. But you gotta spend some money in the beginning. You gotta prepare those two sets of cartridges. The great thing about this idea is that you don't have to buy a full set of inks. Just buy a full set of pre-modified, empty and flushed cartridges from eBay. They even come with the good clip-on orange clip, not the rubber banded one, not the original one. So 60 bucks, you have your second set right there. Reset it, put the clip on it, fill them, store them. The next time you have one low cartridge, remove that whole set, replace it with that brand new refilled modified cartridge set you bought for only 60 bucks instead of buying a full set of OEM for $115. Start enjoying printing at a very low cost. Now the original set that you still have ink in them, except for that yellow one, remember that, you can then top off all seven colors and then the yellow one, you have to replace it with a pre-flushed cartridge that you get from Precision Colors when you buy a refill kit. And in the next few days, folks, the new ink set will be on sale. I already have it. I'm waiting for my cartridges to fully dry now so I can preload my Pro 100 with those inks and give you a test video, provide you with that. That'll be in the next week or so. So keep in mind, guys and gals, that this is something we're not supposed to even be doing. Okay, so thank the printing gods up there that we have come up with these methods, but you have to accept the fact that there are rules, if you will, conditions that you have to put into play to make this work for you as efficiently as possible. As efficiently as what? Original cartridges, which cost a lot more. Okay, so accept that. It's not an easy road. It's not something to be taken lightly or jumped into lightly and then, oh, I got problems. No, do your research prior to that. That's why my channel is here. That's, this is why I do this. I'm not getting rich at doing this. 
I'm doing this to pass on the knowledge I have acquired. And some of it I have come up with myself. And of course, collaboration with other folks as well. So again, just, just look at it in that manner and you will be successful as I have been with my Pro 100. Now, nearing six years of operation with the same printhead. And I had a clock printhead due to that yellow jello effect. And I was able to defeat that. It has never shown up any other problems in the last six years. So again, it's not rocket science. You just have to do things systematically and correctly. And that's why we are here to pass on that information to you guys. Check out my CLI 42 playlist if you have any questions regarding anything having to do with refilling these types of cartridges, okay? Printing on the Pro 100. I have a whole series on that as well. Check it out. Got nothing to do for the weekend? Binge watch. Give me some minutes, please. I need that so that my channel continues to grow. All right, that is it. Thank you so much, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification button and make sure that you also choose to be notified. They've introduced that weird option. It's not just hitting the bell. You have to actually tell it to notify you. And also spread the word, please. Join the Facebook group. It keeps growing every single day by like-minded people who are there to just help each other out. I almost don't have to lift a finger half the time. They are so knowledgeable that I just sit back and enjoy reading their posts. And also like, hit that like button. That helps the channel a lot as well. It used to not really matter much, but now it does. So thank you so much. Happy printing, everybody. Happy refilling. Bye-bye.